Rugby wrap up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Welcome back to TRO, the Rugby Odds. Good to see you. It's great to be back, and we're back with a bang. We're bigger and better than before. How? Why? Well, in a word, we're global. That's right. And along with my colleagues who are hanging out in our sponsor opportunity green room, Mr. John Bradshaw Layfield, a.k.a. Johnny Spoons, and King Gift A. Bailu, the Yogi Berra of rugby, we will be covering global rugby. That's right. We'll be skimming across the oceans and seas, hopping over border walls and coming right into your backyard to spread our message via the rugby. And we'll have special guests each week that will actually lend us some credibility. That's right. But let's get to it. Let's welcome in our guys, Gift and JBL from the sponsor Opportunity Green Room right now. Guys, that was a terrible introduction. A terrible introduction. <laughs> that is a king. That is King Igbalu. You need to say all hail King Igbalu. You peasant. You need to get on your knees and you need to salute the king. But don't look at him because he's a king. I, I, I was just King Igbalu. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you and what are we calling you these days, Johnny Spoons? This is Forever the Champ. Forever the Champ. You give it the oh. proper title. Recognize and respect, okay? <laughs> Recognize and respect. We will learn, all right, today. <laughs> okay, guys, before we get into the heavy lifting on a relatively light weekend in rugby with Six Nations Rugby, the French Top 14, uh, and Japan's League One, let's get to that lone match in the United Rugby Championship, the URC. It's the South African Derby between the... Stormers and the Sharks. The Sharks are at home in Durban, and they are giving six and a half points at the time of this taping. But before we consider our picks, let's hear what our correspondent on the ground in South Africa, Barry Herbert, has to say. And I quote, It will be hot and muggy, which should suit the Sharks. The Stormers hit their skids last week at Ulster. The team is rocked with injuries, but a few return this week. Sharks, however, on the other hand, are playing well and in form, and Khaleesi is on fire. If Kitsoff and Malherb play, that will be final, as the Stormers are nowhere near their capabilities without their Springbok props. The visitors are also on a long travel schedule, so yes, this week the Sharks are the favorites, but maybe less than the six and a half points. I still expect it to be close. So that's just to confuse us a little bit further, isn't it? Let's get to it, though. John, since you know nothing, what's your pick? Sharks. 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 I swam with the great white sharks off the coast of Hermanus in South Africa. All right, tell me I don't know something about sharks. That is perfect. Gift? Gift? Look, can't go wrong with the petty owner and uh, a big old captain that's under Rock Nation. Hey, let's do this for the Sharks all the time. But I really just want it so that that Muscati will talk some more smack on Twitter and uh, uh, make this a more interesting URC. More and more going through. Let's go. Hashtag Muscati. 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 What was he saying? How do you spell that? How do you spell hashtag Muscati? How do you spell that? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, buck the trend here. I think this is gonna be a, a, a nail biter. I think the Sharks will prevail, but they're not gonna cover that six and a half. All right, and fellas, we have the honor, the privilege of having the most famous reptile, Steve the Lizard Lewis, in to be our Scottish slash Six Nations expert on this segment. So, Stephen, welcome back. You look great. I think you're where you're at the uh, Rugby New York Iron Workers. Headquarters? Glamorous cosmopolitan Jersey City at this very moment. Steve, you know, we've got, uh, this is life after Eddie Jones for England. You've got Steve Stephen Borthwick in there. There's some good feeling. You know, uh, some of the folks aren't jonesing 
for Eddie Jones anymore in, after he was dumped unceremoniously so close to a Rugby World Cup. But Borthwick's in there. There's a good feeling. That can dissipate in an instant if they don't have a good performance in this tournament. Right now, Borthwick and co. favored by 10.5 points against your guys from Scotland. Yeah, well, I, th I think you have to give it a little bit of context here. So to give you a bit of context about Six Nations, I'm going to quote some Shakespeare. Are you ready for some Billy Shakespeare? You hit us with <laughs> I am. I am. Six nations, all alike in dignity, in fair Europa, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge, break forth new mutiny, where civil hands make civil blood unclean. And the Six Nations are full of uncivil hands right now. The backdrop is scandal. Is um, the, the, the Six Nations couldn't come of a better time for four of these six unions. In Wales, you've got a sexism and misogyny scandal. In Scotland, you've got a sexism and concussion scandal. In England, you've got a failure to communicate a special general meeting, which is going to result in the ouster of the Bill Sweeney. Uh, in France, you've got Bernard Lepore having to resign because of corruption. So this is a really uh, unusually uh, gloomy backdrop for the Six Nations in which all those administrators and most of us fans can't wait for the thing to start. And we get a little bit of good vibes going again, as opposed to the, the poor headlines of the last two weeks. So that's the context. Now back to England, 10 and a half points. I'm insulted. Insulted, I say. I, I agree with you. I think that's a big spread. But John, William Wallace was hanged, disemboweled, beheaded, and drawn and courted. A little bit of overkill on the killing department. Will the Scots... Avenge Mel Gibson? Let me give a little contrast here, okay? We have a man who was just quoting Shakespeare, and we have a host that can barely speak English. Okay? <laughs> that is the dichotomy that we got right here, and it's never been greater. So he's following a guy with a third grade reading level, and he's quoting Shakespeare. That might be a little bit of overkill, but it shows you how great Steve Lewis is, and it shows you how poor you are. <laughs> What's your pick, guy? Here's what is concerning me. I like Gregor Townsend. I like Scotland. I'm a McGregor by ancestry. Okay. Not like you claiming you're from Ireland or wherever that else and you're Dual from real citizen. Leon. I'm a McGregor. I'm Scottish. I love my Scottish people. The problem is I he's going to pick against them. He's going to pick nope, against them. Nope. I don't know how they're going to respond oh. to the new coach. Okay. So this is to me is up in the air. I'm going to take the 10 and a half points going to take scotland to oh. win not necessarily the game but to cover the points that's too many points and uh the books are begging you when they give you a hook on the other side of 10 or it's 10 and a half they're begging you to take the other side i'm going to take the other side maybe i'm taking the cheese maybe i get hit by the mousetrap don't know i'm going with scotland freedom william wallace shakespeare john saying what he says more often than not i don't know you heard it there. Gift, what about you? Look, this is going to be the uh, first Six Nations, I arguably will say, that internationally, overall, will be the most watched Six Nations between Netflix documentary, between all the scandals going on, new changes in coaching. We finally have an attention and a storyline that completes this whole thing rather than just a game. But when it comes to England and Scotland, between rivalry and new coaching, uh, there is a lot to be uncertain of. And with this, I have to say, I have to say, I question the ability to separate attention uh, from play in this. And I look at England to actually step up out of the pure pettiness of getting rid of Eddie Jones and to take the 10 points in favor of England over Scotland. Sorry, sorry, Steve. Uh, it, it just is that way. I look to see the new coach coming in strong and hopefully making a name for himself as he loses the rest of the rounds after this. But I'm taking England in this one. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, it's very, this is a very simple one for me. A, B, E. Anybody but England. That's it. Plus, Glasgow is on fire in the United Rugby Championship, the URC. They are playing well. Scotland on the front foot, take the 10 and a half points and look for the upset in Twickenham. Steve Lewis could have picked aliens from the moon who've never played rugby before, and you would have gone with them. Moving on, Ireland, on the road in Cardiff, Principality Stadium, 
Under Warren Gatlin, part one was one of the most tough places for a visitor to go in and play against the Welsh. Now he is back, and they are welcoming in Ireland. Ireland on the road, favorites by six and a half. John. Ireland's got the biggest game of the year next week. They're playing in Dublin. They're they're hosting France. That's going to decide the Six Nations, depending on what England does. But I think that decides the Six Nations. It's going to be hard for them to focus on this game. Same as it is going to be for France playing Italy when they're giving uh, giving up 21 and a half points. However, Gatlin, I don't think he's been there long enough to turn this team around. Uh, Last Six Nations, they lost 22-21 to uh, Italy. I think that Ireland goes in there and rolls them boys. Interesting. All right. Now, Steve and Gift, I'll give you more intel as per. I don't want John to have that intel when I when he makes his pick. So Gatland understands the importance of this tournament. He's not just using this to tweak and, and experiment for the Rugby World Cup. He's in it to win it. And meanwhile, Ireland's head coach, Andy Farrell, the father of Owen Farrell, the captain of England, says that, this Irish iteration has developed a thicker skin. They know how to take a punch. And you know Andy Farrell from his rugby league days knows how to take a punch and throw one. But he says this team knows how to deal with adversary, adversity, and they are going to prevail. What do you think, Gift? I'm putting it on Ireland, not so much just because they are already one of the best top two teams to be coming out of this. But I think Gatlin has so much pressure between payment, between team, between presentation. Look for Ireland to w- take this with the six and a half points. It will be an early struggle, but Ireland will take this on the second half. This is going to be strongly a second half game. So you're picking Ireland and you're laying the six and a half. Yes. Which is what he just there. said, dummy. Well, I don't know this. I, I, I was glazing over. I'm going to be a little bit fair here. My Irish brothers are going to win this match. I think Wales is going to play tough. They always play tough in Cardiff. And I think that Ireland wins by at least six and a half in a very hotly contested match that may come down to a final try in the final moments. Stephen, your expert uh, wisdom on this? Yep, I think uh, Wales, like England, will probably get some kind of a new coach bounce, right? You, you tend to get that players wanting to respond to a change in leadership and prove themselves all over again. Um, however, I do think Ireland are now at a level above. I think their cohesion, their... Um, consistency in selection and coaching and all of the above, they're just coming to a boil. So I think they will ultimately have too much for what what may be a very impassioned and uh, feisty, fiery first half from Wales. But I agree with Gift. I think second half, um, the cream will rise to the top. And I think Ireland have just too much for Wales at this time. The French, favored by three touchdowns plus. That's 21 and a half points giving the Azuri, against the Azuri, who are playing at home. The Italians have some pop these days, though, and they're represented by they're represented well by Benetton Treviso in the URC. They're a very respectable eighth place in that 16-team table, and they are over 500 at 7 and 6. But... 33 men out of the Italian roster, 17 of their best players are from Treviso, 10 play for pro teams outside of Italy. That leaves six for poor Zebra Parma, and as a big reason, Zebra is 0-13 in the URC. They're not very good. John, you suck at this, so you go first. Somebody call the police (laughs) because Kappa Uzo is going to steal the show. So last year, Six Nations. Italy oh. loses by 27, 33, and 51 to England, Ireland, and France. Then Kappa Uzo makes his oh. debut scores twice against Scotland, 33-22. Then they beat Wells because Kappa Uzo was the one that set it up. They go on to beat Australia. I think France is by far the better team. I think they could send their second team down there and beat Italy. The problem is France has Ireland, that place you're from with the snakes you know what saint patrick should have got rid of the irish and kept the snakes that would have been a lot better whoa but because france has ireland next week i think france pulls the foot off the gas italy covers the 21 and a half cop uzo call the police all right steve i'm gonna bring you in instead of bringing you in last because we desperately need some clarification can you explain to the audience who john is referring to I, I thought it was a very succinct and uh, logical and reasoned and persuasive argument for, for someone it. can appreciate genius. 
Yeah. Mm. So I did, there's not one <laughs> word, not one word there with which I disagree. He was, in particular, extolling the virtues of the Italian virtuoso Capuzzo, who came on like a, like a, a shining star last year into the Six Nations firmament. Um, but I do agree with JBL's points. I think uh, France are too good. I think France will win, but not by that margin. Interesting. Gift, you have all this in front of you now. What's your what's your take on this? 21 and a half points look, in Rome. Look, there, there's three things that you can guarantee in life. One, you're going to get taxed. Two, at some point you'll die. And three, the French will never close a game strongly. And in my opinion, this is where it's going to end up happening once again. France always has the best team, best talent, always has fast and speed and everything, and yet every single time it matters, especially against teams they should dominate, just wilter, just wilter. And I see this happening again with Italy. They're going to be looking past, looking into next week, want to make sure that they have their best guys ready to go. Italy will cover the spread. I mean, it's been said multiple times over. I look at Italy taking this. 21 and a half is way too much, and France just doesn't care enough to do that give it to italy to cover to cover the spread lose still lose but cover the spread all right so it's a laissez-faire uh state of ennui with the french closing out a match is that what you're saying gift laissez-faire and ennui it's, I'm wow. talking to gift. I understood. I understood what a Lizard said. I, Dude, I never know what it is likes saying, of Layfield. Matt. I can dumb it down a little bit for God's sakes, right? I want to make this very clear. I want to make this very clear. If Stephen Lewis were ever to host the show, Gift and I would leave you in a heartbeat and 100%. beg and beg him to be on his show. Well, I, you know what? I, I accept that Stephen is that good, and I I would be very honored if he were to replace me on this program. But in the meantime, you're forgetting every you're forgetting. The key component here, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Giuseppe Garibaldi Cup that we're playing for in Rome. And there's no way the Italians are going to lay down, especially as they're on the front foot. I think they cover this easily. So take the points with Italy. On that note, we, we are very sad because now we have to bid Steve farewell to go back and run his repeating championship team in the Major League Rugby Thank you for coming on the program, Mr. Steve Lewis. It's been a pleasure, Gift. It's been a pleasure, JBL. McCarthy, I'll talk to you later. Wow. Hey, <laughs> to Brute. Wow. Let it go, guys. See you later on. All right. And we got to go. We got to pay some bills. We'll be right back after this. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. And we're back and we're going to go from France to France. We're going to go from talking France in the Six Nations to talking the French top 14, arguably the most chic rugby league on the planet. And why they're playing this weekend is just absolutely dopey to me. They've got 10 of the 14 teams missing key players for their Six Nations uh, appearances, but we have to pick them anyway, guys. So it might be a little bit tricky, a little bit muddled. John, go f yourself. That is so, <laughs> so, so unprofessional. Part of my oh. French, John. Part of my French. Come on, allez-vous. I'm, I'm from Paris. I was used to vacation the south of France. And, yeah. So can you believe how about how about Toulouse missing all these players in Bayonne and they're still favored? Here's the here's the team I like though. Racine, 92. They've only missing two players. Powell has got all their players, but here's the problem. Powell has got all their players. And their players are like you, Matt. They're not any good. So it doesn't matter who's playing on the other side because they're got their players. I'm going Racine 92. Come on, allez vous. French That's people. the uh, Texas pronunciation of the French. Racine. 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 92. I like the pick. I hate your French. Gift. You know, look, it, 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 it's always something with the French over here. But, you know, I, 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 the teams that I like watching right now is Bordeaux and Stade Francais. Now, I will say this. I very, very rarely 
support teams that come out of Paris because the arrogance that comes out of Paris is strong. But Stade Francais, even though they are missing six players from their team, they do tend to have the favorite on this. But I continue my trend. I refuse to support a team coming from Paris. Bordeaux, I'm taking them on this one. They have the least amount of players. I expect them to come in and smash that Parisian arrogance. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tie this one up. I like both those picks, believe it or not. But Sacre Bleu, mais très bête frères. Uh, J'aime Bayonne because Bayonne, New Jersey is close to my heart. I'm taking Bayonne on the road versus a very depleted Toulouse because 10 and a half points, c'est trop. This is too much. So that's my pick. And the rest of our picks are up in the graphic. Let's take a quick break and come back with the hottest, most desirable destination for players these days, Japan's Rugby League One. We'll be right back. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. I've been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. Okay, we're back and we're hopping across the globe to Japan's League One. John. Now, I'm picking against anybody who plays Knitsu Lions. They've given up 356 points in six games. That is abysmal. So I'm going with a Shizoko Rev Run. That's right, Rev Run to win this game. He's going with the Blue Rev. Gift? Look, you know, take it against that beautiful backdrop in, in Tokyo against the mountains, taking it up to Yokohama. But what's really most important is the show of weakness that the Panasonic Wild Knights had against uh, the Eagles last week. And I'm going to give it to these Green Rockets, all right? Green Rockets have seen blood in the water, and they will attack, and they're going to take it in and beat the spread of 24 and a half that, uh, that the Knights have and be able to – I mean, they're not going to win, but – they're going to cover the spread, all right? They're going to cover the spread, and that's what it's all about. I'm giving it to the Green Rockets. Wild Knights will win, but they have shown that they are vulnerable. That and, streak is going to be coming to its end soon. Huh. And by the way, I spent a month in Rapungi one night in Tokyo. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That legendary. Legendary night. Oh, yeah. Fellas, the Mitsubishi <laughs> Heavy Industries Sagamihara Dinobores. I have nothing to say other than their name. I wanted to get that out. Uh, but I'm going to go with Bernard Foley and the other undefeated team in the league, the Kubota Spears Funabashi Tokyo Bay. How about that? If Tamura is not playing in that one, I like that game. Check back with us on Friday for our Twitter updates, by the way, on these matches in case the lineups aren't what we thought they were going to be at this taping. Because as long as Tamura ain't playing tomorrow i'm okay with that and we are just now at our final <laughs> what are you shaking your head <laughs> no, no, no. i i refuse to condone that joke that, that's not even a joke that was just embarrassing that was embarrassing, embarrassing. Just all across the board. i i apologize to all the japanese people for this horrible pronunciation that led to that horrible uh, uh off offload of a uh, phrasing and we're not even call it a joke and on that note guys we can segue to our patty power pick of the pack john so unfortunately i'm picking ireland as my game of the week to cover the six and a half points in wells and win the game wow gift you know uh, uh it, it's always a little bit difficult for me to be able to uh you know work with or not work with, well, work with you, yes. It's always difficult to work with you. But it's always, always difficult to be able to side with a team that 
I genuinely like watching to lose, but my pick of the week is going to still be England over Scotland. I, I do, I, I just the, the whole storyline behind it between Eddie Jones, this new coach, and 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 then just how it affects Australia, just innocent Australia in the background. But I do feel like the players have just enough of an anger inside to say, "Hey, Eddie Jones, f you. We can win without you." And unfortunately, Scotland will be the casualty of that because I still expect England to lose in this entire Six Nations. So my game of the week: England over Scotland with the points, but just the petty win, just just one good petty win. So, guys, my Patty Power pick of the pack is going to be Italy and France combining for over 55 points in that match. What do you think of them apples? You like apples, John? Riveting. I mean, just riveting. That was. Oh, I, unfortunately, we're going to have to cut you short, you guys. Don't have out an of time. Piece. We're out mm-hmm. of time. Wow. This was easy. On that note, I want to thank Mr. John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE legend, the gift of rugby, gift a Bailu. Yogi Bear. Ebelu Bumba Ye. 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 The Yogi <laughs> Bear of rugby and Mr. Steve the Lizard Lewis. And thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including our Major League Rugby show. And please sign up for our rugby wrap up Red Cross Blood Donor Team.